This red video will be different from other ones in the series, mainly because it just has much more of a positive note to it. It's about therapy and recovery, my journey out of darkness to a better mental place. And if you haven't seen the previous red videos, they'll provide a lot of context to where I was mentally at the origin of this story. And it does actually have a very particular place and point in time where all of this began and it hasn't ended until this day. I will be talking about just a portion in time that I think was rather significant and maybe beneficial for you to hear about, but I feel like I gathered and learned the tools of self-improvement and those things have never gone away. The trajectory that I'm on is always to try and self-improve, even if it's just at a slow pace or it's incremental. It's like a journey that doesn't have an end anymore and it all began with the story that I'm about to tell you. So it was the summer of 2006 and I was going to Download Festival. A friend who wasn't going recommended I should go check out Henry Rollins who was playing on the second stage doing a spoken word gig. So when I was there I managed to convince a friend at the festival to come along with me to check out this guy and we both listened to him talk for 30 minutes straight without taking a break and both had a very profound experience walking away from it that the things that he said had a lot of weight to them and a lot of meaning and that they could potentially change our lives in some way or another. Now it's really quite difficult to actually quantify and describe what Henry Rollins is like on stage and I think you just have to listen to him and maybe it works for you and maybe it doesn't. But I felt like he spoke from a place of pain that felt familiar yet clearly he was years and decades ahead of wherever I was in life in terms of maturity and knowledge and he had an abundance of good intentions for people that really came across in his language and he spoke very authentically to the disenfranchised as he so often likes to put it and use that word and I felt like I identified as someone who was at that point in time disenfranchised and so what he'd done was essentially sowed the seeds of doubt about my own lifestyle because he brought up some things about health and fitness and drugs and made me look at it from a different angle and perspective and so after hearing his talk I kind of had some doubts in my mind about my own lifestyle. Now the sad reality is things kind of went downhill after here but that's because the doubts that have been sowed in my mind were essentially negatively manifesting because I was now aware of the damage that I was doing to myself with the lifestyle I was living but I was also unable to break the cycle it was like I was trapped and just slowly falling downwards but you know eventually I would reach my breaking point as I talked about in the other videos I just got to that point where I couldn't do this anymore and I managed to actually uh, drop my habits and start to turn things around to some extent. Now memories are a blur. This is like all well over 10 years ago and so it's hard to remember specific points in time and even though I do remember uh, a very specific point I don't know roughly where it is in relation to other things. So this was somewhere around the time of starting to get on the path to sobriety, uh, stopping slowing down the drinking of alcohol and slowing down my uh, smoking habits and I remember that I reached, reached a very low point around here. I would call it the lowest point in my life. I was walking into town. I'd had a conversation with a friend on the phone and I felt absolutely rotten. And bear in mind, you know, I had less drugs in my system than ever, but these things take time to heal from. However, when I hit this low point, I just kind of realized that the only direction I could go in now was upwards. I hadn't actually probably reached a rock bottom but it was the, certainly the rock bottom of my life and I just kind of knew that it was upwards from here on out. However, that wasn't a particularly positive feeling either because I knew it would be really hard work. It wasn't like, oh, everything's okay now. I just kind of had this feeling like it can't get worse than this and I just need to go in the other direction. And it's going to be tough and difficult, but that is the way in which I'm going to go. So with all of that said, let's call this the recovery period now where I realized that I had to head in a positive direction and there was so much more I had to learn but I started with something rather basic which was an aim and a goal, something to build for myself and given my passion for music and the amount of music I had written over the years I quite naturally gravitated 
just towards, hey, I'm going to take my music seriously. I'm actually going to try and turn these little doodles of songs that I do for fun into something. And that was the beginning of me making music under the name of Soulside Eclipse. Although, actually, I'd always been using that name, but that's when I started to really take it seriously and work towards making records. I also then, you know, started, uh, as well as learning my musical skills and production and stuff like that, getting better at it, I started to take the physical side of things a little more seriously. I started getting on the bike every day. And it was actually around this time that Devin Townsend released an album called Key. And I remember I just used to listen to that album and cycle every single day. I would put that record on and go cycle. And I just found it so therapeutic to enjoy this lovely, relaxing, indulgent music, get my mind away from all the horrors of the past and just sort of focus on cycling the bike. And that was uh, a really nice period to go through. This then uh, kind of led me into running as well. Eventually I was like, right, I need a bit more than this now. I need to you know, lose some weight and get myself in better shape. And so I started to run. And I'd also started to listen to Henry Rollins a lot more. Now that I'd sort of gotten out of the hole, I went back to this guy and found his stuff online. There's loads of videos of him talking. I started going to his gigs and really becoming interested in him and his music, his lyrics and the things that he would say and this kind of introduced me to weightlifting rather naturally as he is a big proponent for weightlifting and has like a an obvious physique and so I got myself some weights and started to do some basic weight training as well. So as time went by I started to see a kind of shift in myself in the things that I were interested in. I started to really gravitate towards people and things that were positive and people were offering advice and knowledge and I also started reading a lot of self-help books as well. And I basically got into a stride of self-improvement where I was interested in kind of figuring myself out and figuring how to make things better. And in doing this, I had to, you know, overturn some nasty rocks. And I found that there were some, some big walls and hurdles in my way that were just a little bit too difficult to cope with on my own. And to get from A to B in life, to get to where I wanted to go, I realized that I was going to need some form of therapy or help. So it's a really scary thing to do, but I had to go into the doctor and simply ask for help with my mental health. And I know that for many people out there, as I've engaged in the whole conversation around this and uh, read other people's stories, that is a really difficult and scary thing to do. And it was for me, but the thing that got me through it was listening to that nagging voice that tells you this is what you need to do, this is the right thing, and kind of just giving into it and putting up with the uh, the the temporary moment of, you know, this sucks, why do I have to do this? Because the outcome is going to be so much better. And for me, it really was because uh, the doctor was able to get me in touch with the NHS's system for mental health and very quickly uh, they communicated with me and got me to a therapist within about a week, I think. It was a very fast process and I had help immediately and I think it must have lasted about 10 to 12 weeks and it was an immensely positive experience to have therapy. However, when I went to the doctor I actually knew what type of therapy I wanted to have already or to have uh, and that's because I'd done some research and what I was interested in was called CBT which is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy and it is the act of looking at your own mind like it's a sort of system with parts of it that aren't acting rationally. And so with a lot of a discussion and then exercises for thought and how you think and feel about things, you get given some tools for looking for the rationality in your own thoughts. And so many times did I realize that the things that were inhibiting me were negative thoughts inside of my mind. Now, the trick wasn't to ignore them and then replace them with positivity, it was to find the rational argument in response to those negative thoughts and also to uh, learn to just put up with them a little bit more and realize that they can be temporary, that they're not as damaging as they appear to be. And that period where I had this therapy was probably the most productive uh, and most advancing in terms of mental health period of my life. Like that was an immense experience that really, really changed me for the better. And you know, it's something I would recommend to anyone who feels like they need it. If you feel like you need some help with what's going on in your mind, get to a doctor, get some therapy. It's an immensely positive experience. There'll be parts of it that will be difficult when you have to open up and when you have to first ask for help. But, 
you know, the the results you can get from this outweighs the negatives at the beginning. And the really cool story is the things I was trying to do in life I actually got done after I received this help and to this day I just feel like those have been foundational building blocks on which I've improved which is fantastic and again it's called CBT cognitive behavioral therapy it might not be the type for you it's not for everyone but you know we've got the internet you can go and do some research and learn about these things before you even have to ask and so you can get clued up and maybe figure out uh, what is right for you before you would ask for help if you happen to need so now for the end of this video I actually just want to pick out a Henry Rollins lyric from a song that was really profound to me so as you can probably imagine if you've listened to the videos in this series over time I've had to put up with some difficult internal reflection trying to figure out what's going on in your own mind and how to deal with it and music and lyrics can be a very powerful tool in helping you do that and there is one particular lyric that just blew me away and felt so profound and the lyric goes if you could see the you that I see when I see you seeing me you'd see yourself so differently I assure you and that is from the Henry Rollins song low self-opinion which is one of my favorites of his so I don't know exactly what he meant by this lyric but here's what it means to me the burdens the pains the traumas that you carry around of you that can make you feel worthless or ugly they are invisible from the outside and you are to another person by how you interact with them not by your past the pains you feel are personal and it's for you only to experience and I found a strange comfort in that. It made the pain feel smaller and it made me feel like something that I already knew that going forward in life is to relinquish the past. And that I think is actually a really good note to end things on as I've pretty much said all I wanted to say on this topic and this was going to be the last video in the Red series but there'll probably be one more, maybe a bit of a Q&A as I've been reading all of the comments on these videos. It's uh, been really quite, well, a, a, a very overwhelming experience for which I don't really have the words right now. Um, but yes, there may be one more video in this series and this is where we end this one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.